Welcome back. As a small business owner, I know for me, when I look at insurance or anything, I just want to get it done and get it out of the way. And to join us today is Zach Padula. Uh, Zach is from the Hill Group of New England, and you uh, deal with all sorts of business insurance. And for me, as a business owner, like I said, for many things, I just want to say I got it. Right. right? And once I got it, I got it. Right. Um, but we really need to take a look at that. So I think what you had mentioned is there's all sorts of types of business insurance that's out there. Can you kind of tell us what some of the common ones are and maybe give us some examples? Sure. So when we meet with a business owner, we'll typically discuss their property insurance. So that's going to be uh, for their building or any contents they have inside, their general liability, ins general liability insurance, uh, workers' compensation, auto liability insurance, umbrella insurance, uh, and then depending on the type of business that they are, they might need management liability insurance which includes employment practices liability, mm -hmm. fiduciary liability, directors and officers. You know, we have the conversation with them to understand what their risks are based on the type of business that they are and find them an appropriate policy to address those risks. When you go into the, those companies, do you actually find that a lot of people maybe only have one or two of those and they really need more of them? Or S Certainly. So there yeah. are often times where we take a look at their portfolio of policies, understand their business and say, hey, you may be exposed here, you may be exposed there there are policies out there where you can transfer that risk away from your pockets to the insurance company. Okay. Um, and so is it is it a surprise when you say, listen, you needed to have more property insurance or, if, for instance, workers' comp maybe, or you don't have an umbrella policy? Mm -hmm. Which one do you think is the most common one that they're missing? Oftentimes it's the umbrella coverage because it's often business owners don't think that they can get there where they need to pierce the primary general liability coverage and get into the umbrella. Um, in today's environment, we're seeing claims that exceed the primary liability layer. Can you give million. us an example, like something where, so I think what you're saying is you may have a certain sort of coverage that's very, you know, succinct to what it covers, but then it only has a certain limit, correct? correct. And the umbrella is going to cover that? So the umbrella would behave as excess liability insurance, where you could purchase an additional three, five, ten, depending on what your exposure is, and I say ten, ten million yeah. of coverage. Claims are piercing the initial one million of general liability coverage. Uh, medical costs are higher, uh, court verdicts are higher. Um, those are piercing the primary million layer, million dollar layer, getting into the umbrella layer. So we have to sell the additional limit, additional limit to the client, make sure they're adequately protected. So you know, again, I think you know, as a small business owner, I, I'm starting to understand that. But I think a lot of people also understand that at home. Mm -hmm. You know, the simple thing is, hey, my house is insured maybe for five hundred thousand, but if someone slips and falls, mm -hmm. and let's say that was the coverage of slip and fall or whatever, mm -hmm. and I don't know, and they sue me for a million dollars, you only get five hundred from my company. Now they're going to go after my personal. And in a business, they're going to go after your business, but the umbrella is going to help protect that. Correct. And it's an inexpensive solution to give you an additional million, again, million, two, three, four, five million of coverage over your head to protect your assets. Got it. All right. You know, one of the other insurances, I know I keep coming back to myself, not trying to be selfish, but maybe it helps <laughs> a viewer and it helps me to understand it that, um, you know, in my business, we get audited by the state of Rhode Island probably every two or three years. Mm -hmm. And when they come in, I'm always like, oh, did I do everything perfectly? And the last time they came in, all they talked about was internet security, cyber security, and that was the number one thing. And then I actually found out there were some insurances to help that along with what I could actually do for you know physical protection on my computers and my networks. What's out there in the insurance world to help with that? Cyber liability is hot. It's a very hot topic. We're approaching the conversation with every one of our clients these days. If you have a digital presence, you're exposed to some sort of cyber event that, that, that's taking place. A few of the more publicized ones in you know, the Colonial Pipeline um, cyber event that took place. Um, the city of Atlanta was hacked a couple of years ago. CNA Insurance Company faced a cyber breach. Um, the ransomware, uh, the ransom requirements to, make, to pay the uh, cyber actors has been significant, uh, approaching six figures, seven figures, eight figures, just to regain access to their systems. And that's not just for these big national no. companies. This no. can be you know, and I say small, you know, small might be under a million, small mm -hmm. might be under 10 million or whatever it is. Those companies are still very susceptible, right? If you have any sort of network, they can come in and grab everything off your system from customer information to your own business information. Absolutely. So oftentimes we find small business owners don't see themselves as exposed to a cyber event. Yeah. In reality, they're potentially the most exposed. And in today's environment where you have, give, because of COVID, the work from home environment, you may have less protocol or security on your computer at home than you did in the office, leaving you, your business, more exposed. Okay, so what, is that normally very expensive, not too bad? Or? It's a market that's in turmoil right now. Um, rates are going through the roof because of what's going on with the ransomware attacks, social engineering attacks, uh, six-figure payouts. 
uh, on claims. Mm -hmm. Rates are definitely going up in that space. It remains an inexpensive solution to transfer a lot of that risk because otherwise that's coming out of your pockets as a business owner or you purchase a policy and depending on what your exposures are, it's priced accordingly. Um, but it's a, another very important way to transfer risk away from the business owner to the insurance company. Okay. Um, if we look at the current state of your industry, mm -hmm. which is the insurance industry, particular to you know uh, larger businesses or, or businesses, can you tell us kind of what the state of that is sure. between rates and reasons for rates going up, down, or whatever it is? Over the past two years, it's been what we call a hardened insurance marketplace. Uh, that typically means that insurance companies have faced significant losses, resulting in a decreased appetite for new risks and increased rates to try and. Uh, gain back some of those losses that, that they've had to pay out. Yep. Uh, so we've you know, been facing rate increases across the board uh, really for the past two years. Uh, we think for 2022 and beyond we're over the peak of rate increases and that we'll start to see the market kind of correct itself and, and, and reset back to you know, moderate rate increases or flat renewal uh, rate increases which is you know, an easier conversation to have with our clients. Yeah. Business owners like to see that a little bit more. Uh, but it's definitely been challenging. The property insurance marketplace has been hit by natural disasters across the country. The fires in California, the Texas freeze uh, this past year, um, hurricane activity. It's really put the property marketplace in turmoil the past two years. Um, we find that insurance companies have gotten the rate that they wanted and now they're coming back down to earth a bit. All right, but those, and again, I was a little confused. I said, listen, I'm not in in a freeze kind of zone where mm -hmm. that would happen to me, right. but that's going to affect me or anyone else even up here in the Northeast or anywhere else in the country because you're sharing that risk and the, all those insurance companies are increasing their premium. Is that how that that's works? That's exactly right. It's a sharing of risk that really, you know, a, a business owner in Rhode Island might say, hey, why am I being impacted by the events in Texas? Yeah. Well, the insurance companies have risks all over the country and when they get hit in Texas or California or in Florida or in the Gulf, um, they need to regather that premium that they can across their entire book of business. So unfortunately, everybody's got to pay the price. Gotcha. Okay. So tell us about, you know, the process probably works maybe a little bit differently than an individual. Mm -hmm. um, how does the process work for you as a, as a company when you go out there and you're trying to either quote or, or do whatever? What's that process look like for a business owner sure. when they approach you and let's just say either you approach them, they approach you. How does that all kind of unfold? Yeah, well first it's understanding their business. It's understanding their risks, um, the current policies that they have in place, how they're insured, where we may be able to improve coverage for them. We'll have that conversation, get to know each other, build rapport, uh, bring that information back to our insurance companies uh, and, and let them do a full underwriting analysis. We gather options for the client, uh, present them options for their, uh, for their program to either enhance it or move it um, or uh, choose a different uh, coverage program for themselves and for their business mm -hmm. to transfer that risk. Uh, typically, our process likes to begin 45 to 60 days out uh, for new business or, or longer, depending on the size of the business. Uh, for our current clients, we'd like to start 90 days out. We don't like to rush. We want to be calm, cool, and collected, uh, making sure that they're making a, a good, an important business decision for themselves um, as, they, as they move forward. Great. So if, if I were to kind of, you know, one of the things we talked about this beforehand, but it was something that you impressed upon me that what you can do that might be a lot different than just quoting anyone insurance and just trying to get the best rate. Obviously, you want to get them good quality insurance, too, but there's ways in which you can actually enter the workplace and tell them, hey, we can actually make your workplace for whatever reason, if there's a risk there, we can help you lower that risk and in, in turn mm -hmm. save you money on your premium. How does that work? Yeah, so we like to provide more than just the brokering of policies as a service. You know, depending on the client, who they are, uh, we can partner with our insurance companies, facilitate the conversations with our clients to make sure that any exposures that they may have in the workplace, in particular for workers' compensation, yeah. we want to make sure that those exposures, those hazards are addressed and controlled uh, and prevent losses. Ultimately, that'll impact their experience modification factor for workers' comp, uh, which has a direct impact on their premium. If we can come in, partner with the client, partner with the insurance company, foster a good relationship, um, everybody wins in that situation. And does that happen over time or is that something you can go in and fix right away? Is it? It's over time. I think we like to understand how losses develop, uh, if there's any particular trend in where losses may come out uh, for workers' comp. Um, understanding the client, understanding what their workplace hazards are, yeah. um, getting some feedback from the insurance company, and again, just having a, a productive roundtable discussion with the client and, uh, you know, trying to get those losses under control if they can be. Gotcha. Okay. As a um, 
let's say, you know, as a business owner that might be watching, what would be some reasons why they might be like, you know what, I, I should give someone a call, whether it's you, whether it's someone else, because like I said, I don't give anybody a call. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, I think I'm good, right? right, right. What, what, what should spur me? What should be some of the buzz things in my head? Like, oh, I really need to check that out and I should have someone look at this. Yeah, I think it's just making sure you're comfortable with what you have for your insurance program. If you, you know, review your coverages, uh, review your claims that you've had, making sure that you feel comfortable with the coverage uh, that you have in place, that you're adequately protected from a limit standpoint, uh, from a property standpoint, making sure your building is appropriately um, uh, appraised from a replacement cost standpoint. If it goes down tomorrow, do I have enough money to rebuild it back to where it was? Yeah. Um, it's having those conversations with the agent um, to make sure that they, you know, that the client ultimately feels comfortable, can sleep well at night, right. and make sure that they're protected and that the insurance policy is doing it, doing its job. Great. As we kind of wrap up a little bit, tell us just quickly, besides business insurance, what does the Hill Group do? Yeah, so First the, of all, they're in Rhode Island, correct? They've got a presence here? We do. So the Hill Group of New England, uh, the New England platform is headquartered in Cranston, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hill Group was founded in 2009, uh, based out of Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a presence up and down the East Coast, uh, and we're expanding slowly west. Um, we are an independent insurance agency, uh, mm -hmm. but that, inc so that includes property and casualty insurance, which is what I focus on, yeah. um, personal and business insurance. And we also do employee benefits, 401k. Um, we like to, you know, we present an, op an insurance solution to our clients in, in more than one facet. Great. Well, I appreciate your time. It's always great to have good information. Hopefully you can join us again soon. Absolutely. Thank you. When we return, we're going to talk a little bit about protecting your security, your, your internet ID. 